Hey there, it's me, Jimmy the K, with the Jimmy the K Sports Show. Sick of people at ESPN or Sports Center who think they have their heads on their shoulders, but really don't. It's time for the Jimmy the K Sports Show, and we're going to give you the most urgent sports news. Now it's time for you to buckle up and sit down. It's the Jimmy the K Sports Show. We are live, unedited, and giving it to you now. Here we go, boys. How you doing today? It's me, Jimmy the K, the host of this show. I'm glad that you joined us today. May 12th, 2015. I'm so glad that you joined us today. We had a few sports stories that we've worked on the last few weeks. And, and uh, you've seen on the All About Sports Zone page that we're going to definitely, definitely going to to uh, get into this, this show. Uh, a few of those are, are going to be very short-lived stories. The, uh, the, the last one's going to be a long-lived story. So we're going to go ahead and get to the short-lived stories first and then head on up to the long-lived story in which I'm going to give you my take on a certain penalty that came out in the NFL earlier this week. As a matter of fact, it came out yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Well, for some of the lesser news, the stuff that, you know, we just care about. <laughs> oh, the uh, Thunder have a new chapter as they have uh, hired a new coach. They hired Billy Donovan from Florida as the new head coach. Uh, speculation has swirled that uh, Russell Westbrook is not happy about this signing, but, you know, that's only speculation. And uh, Donovan's definitely said he's wanted to meet with all of the, the players and, and wanted to get to know them and, and um, make things happen. For those of y'all that came out to the Ranger game uh, a couple of weeks ago, stop by, meet me, uh, sign autographs, took pictures. They're probably up on your Facebook page somewhere. Um, great meeting you. The uh, Rangers were actually winning that game when we left in the eighth inning 5-1 to one and ended up losing 6-5, to five, if I'm not mistaken. It was great meeting you guys out there, though. I'm glad that you come out. I'm glad that you uh, support the show each and every game. Uh, uh, game that I'm able to go out to and I get to meet the fans, get to meet you, uh, the fans of the show, is definitely something that that is is a a uh, a blessing, a blessing so to speak. And, and while I have the blessing of doing this and, and doing the show, uh, there are some that are less fortunate as of right now. You know, we've we've got some here in uh, Oklahoma, some. In Texas, I know Van, Texas, which is uh, out towards Lindale, Mineola area, got almost uh, destroyed by an EF3 tornado. And our thoughts and prayers here at the uh, the Jimmy the K Sports Show would definitely, definitely go out to you there in Van, Texas. And to anyone that's been affected by tornadoes, earthquakes, natural disasters, or anything, our thoughts and prayers go out to you. And, you know, as things kind of get back to normal there in Van, uh, many old uh, uh, Lindell area. Uh, I'm going to try to work something out to where you, the fans out in those areas, can can come by and meet me, whether it be, you know, a local uh, eatery or a local uh, uh, a, a local sports store or a local um, a sports field. One or the other, you know, once things get back to normal, it's going to happen where, where I'm going to get with the uh, – with the city of Van, and we're gonna we're gonna work something out to to do a live show out there and and um, and have a good time and and uh, support that that small town that so many uh, good things have happened to in the past, but it's going through a hard time right now. Uh, that's something for the near future as it begins to kind of lighten up and and things begin to get back to normal there. I'll, I'll get with them and, and we'll definitely look at doing something like that. Uh, one other sports news that they kind of come across was an undrafted uh, player that the Cowboys signed. He has problems. Uh, Lael Collins from LSU, he's had some drug problems. But uh, a Dallas Cowboys signed him in, in a deal, and I feel honestly he's going to be good in that offensive line. Um, an offensive line that could be uh, – very, very dynamic, so to speak. An offensive line that 
that even with one of the worst running backs in all of football, you could still turn around and have have a uh, a good running season with a great offensive line. How about the Rangers the last week? The last week, the Texas Rangers have played some good ball. In the last 10 games, if I'm not mistaken, they're se- they won seven out of the last 10 games. Pretty good. Um, Bannister's kind of have gotten the team on a roll here. They've had some hiccups here and there, but the team's kind of starting to pick up steam, so to speak. And what's really funny, in a way, is that uh, a lot of the head, head steam came forward uh, after John Daniels made a public statement saying that he was ready to make changes for the Texas Rangers. A lot of people were going, no, 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 no. It's not time to make a change yet. Um, the Texas Rangers of Jeff Bannister got the idea. And from then on out, the last seven out of ten games, they've won. Uh, sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes that's what it takes to get a team out there and to get a team hopping. It's just a, a, a little ultimatum, so to speak. But honestly, my MLB player this week, if I had to pick an MLB player for this week, an MLB player, somebody that's just been lighting up, you know, the sport, all season long, or, or the last week, that would have to be Bryce Harper of the uh, Washington Nationals. This guy, this young man, I believe is 20, 21 years old, maybe 22. He just turned 22. He's in his fourth major league season. He's launching balls like crazy. He's finally getting in a rhythm as a major league player. He's kind of the veteran around now. I know it sounds weird saying the veteran around now, when honestly he is – kind of one of the younger kids, but he's taken what I would say as as being a leader over on his shoulders and and taking the other veterans and, and looking up to them and kind of building on that. So congratulations to my player of this week, Bryce Harper of the Washington Nationals. Now to the big story of the week. The big, big, big story. Dum, dum, dum. You can hear it. You can hear it. The fine came out yesterday. The uh, the big deal came out yesterday. And I'm actually going to read something that I posted on the All About Sports Zone page. And I'm going to go from there more into detail as to to uh, my take on this, the, the penalty and, and uh, my take on it. This is word for word from the All About Sports Zone page. Okay. I'm going to be blunt and quite blunt here. The Pats deal with the deflate gate is out of control. While I don't condone any forms of cheating, it still doesn't take away from the fact that the New England Patriots won the Super Bowl. Am I not right? The league knew about this months and months and months ago. and are now just scrambling to punish those involved. What does that say about the NFL? Cheating, while I don't condone, I do condone swift punishments, swift judgments, swift penalties. This was not swift. Now, the NFL is just looking for national attention and that of which they are getting And it's working, but at the same time, the NFL is going to lose fan bases over this being a little thing enough said. That was to the Facebook page all about sports. Now, what I'm talking about is the penalty that was handed down. The penalty that was handed down to the New England Patriots is Tom Brady gets suspended the first four games of the season. His agent has already thoroughly said that he is going to appeal this. Okay. First four games, Brady's out. Okay, what else? The New England Patriots are fined $1 million. Chump change to Kraft. That's chump change. What else happens? They lose their 2016 first-round pick. 
No big deal. If they win the Super Bowl, who cares? It's number 32 anyway, right? But they lose their 2017 fourth round pick. Okay. I'm going to be blunt about this again. And again and again. Why is it a player that commits domestic violence, a.k.a. Ray Rice, and granted, this is all speculation. You know, there's videos of him beating his wife, et cetera, et cetera, but this is all speculation. Only Ray Rice, Ray Rice and his wife know if this really happened, honestly. No one else does. He gets two-game suspension. Tom Brady deflates a few balls or has a few balls deflated. He gets four-game suspension. On top of that, they find the New England Patriots owner, Kraft, $1 million. Big whoop do you do He's got that's chump change to him. And they lose picks. Why? Why in God's heavenly green earth does a guy that commits domestic violence against his wife get less suspension time than that of a player that cheats a little bit, deflates a few balls. Who cares? Why? Why? Because the NFL is so screwed up. And so uh, Roger Goodell is so hell-bent on trying to get this league right that he's Screwing it up. I, I, I could definitely have used another word there. It's screwing it up. And screwing the whole NFL up at the same time. So, do I point the finger at the New England Patriots for cheating? Or to Roger Goodell? I point it at everyone, okay? Again, while I said earlier on the All About Sports Zone Facebook page is that I don't condone the cheating. But what I do condone is swift punishment. The NFL, Roger Goodell, and everyone else in that league, the NFL knew what was going on, and instead they just kind of let it go on, let it go on, let it go on. We're going to investigate this. We're going to investigate this. Oh, hang on here. You're suspended, Tom Brady. Nice try. Better luck next week. This is the NFL skirting and trying to make themselves a powerhouse league and a league that is slowly dwindling and is losing fan base more and more every year. The NFL has lost a statistically scary amount of fans over the last five seasons. They've lost a, an average of at least 7% of fans each and every season. If we continue on that rate, in 10, 15 years from now, the NFL is going to be nothing. It's going to be the old NFL league with the leather, the leather hats and the, the, the deflated footballs. So who cares if Tom Brady deflates one, right? Again, while I have said all day long that I do not condone the fact that New England cheated, I'm, I'm not giving New England a, a free pass with this. But what I am doing is I am calling out the NFL at the same time because the NFL knew about this. The NFL could have done this months and months and months ago when they first knew about it. But instead, they chose to wait until now. And by waiting till now, They've got a lot of fans, and New England fans at that, and an uproar. What's your take on this? What's your take? Do you think the New England Patriots cheated? Email us, Facebook us, Twitter us, or tweet us, however you say that. I'm too old to know those phrases. Uh... You, you know how to get in touch with us. Do you think the New England Patriots cheated? Or do you think I've got my head on my shoulder and we should be pointing fingers at the NFL as well? Again, email us, allaboutsportszone at gmail.com. 
Pretty simple. All about sports zone, one word, at gmail.com. Facebook us. Let's go to facebook.com backslash all about sports zone, one word, and message us there or leave it in a comment section or tweet us. You can find me at Jimmy Kersey one on Twitter. What's your thoughts on this? What's your other sports questions? Those are the three simple ways you can get in touch with me for each and every week. I want you, the fans, to be part of this show. You, the fans, are what makes this show. And as long as the fans keep coming back and keep watching, I will keep doing this each and every week. Until next week, in the words of Nate Roos, I am nothing without your love. I'm Jimmy the K. And as usual, as I like to say each and every week, each and every week, I love to say, Peace out.